Once again, he's with us. He's uh, John Harmon, founder, president, and chief executive officer of the African American Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey. Good to see you, John. Um, honored to be here once again. Thank you. As always. Hey, listen, can we, before we talk about a range of issues, can we plug the program you're still doing on uh, NJPBS? That is an important program. Tell everyone what it is. Pathway to Success airs every first Saturday of the month from 9 to 9.30 a.m. and re-airs at 11.30 on Tuesday evenings. Thank you. And that is on our public television station in New Jersey, NJPBS. All right, enough plugging for our station. Uh, hey, John, listen, we've been doing this series uh, called Urban Matters in cooperation with the folks over at Kane University. They have the John S. Watson Urban uh, Institute that does public policy questions. If I put you on the spot, which I will, and ask you the top three urban issues that matter more than any other, what would they be and why? Well, I, I, there's a number. Given the inflation now, um, child care is at the top. Housing is significant, either renting or seeking to own a home. Um, the cost of transportation. And, and of course, um, public safety and economic opportunity. Uh, that's a mouthful. Yeah. Um, no, but go, I'm going to take these one at a time. Let's go back to child care. Uh, our series, uh, Reimagine Child Care, looking at affordability, accessibility, quality, quality of child care. Why is the challenge and the problems associated with child care, why are they even more difficult and challenging in urban communities? Well, I mean, access to quality child care is important. Um, the cost is, from what I hear, it just continues to go up. And many households are run by single, single parents. Um, and in order for a mom to be gainfully employed, she needs someone to take care of the kids or she wants to advance her education. She needs someone to take care of the kids. So I, I think it's, it's, it's very important uh, to have quality childcare uh, for these young, young men and women. Mm. You know, you mentioned uh, public safety slash crime. Connect issues of public safety to business, to economic vitality in urban communities. Well, if you use, I know we're talking about New Jersey, but if you use Philadelphia. You could use national, whatever. Again, yeah. we're New Jersey centric, but these are. Uh, yeah. Well, not Philadelphia. Just any, 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 anywhere. Go ahead, John. Philadelphia, for example, a few days ago, uh, a gentleman from the Philippines was visiting, uh, going back to the airport via Uber and was hit by, by a straight bullet. Um, tourism from, from, you know, that's gonna kill tourism, not only in Philadelphia and New York, you know, folks getting shoved or shot or stabbed or robbed on the subway. Those are real things that affect the economy. Um, small business owners who are depending on people to patronize them um, may see a, a steep reduction and people coming to do business with them. Uh, perceptions of communities and towns because of public safety. And, and hey, God forbid they're not overly populated by black and brown people. That then feeds into an adverse perception. So the, the, you know, public safety is, a, is an unfortunate ill in society that we all must find a way to make it safer. John, go back to the transportation issue. When you talk about transportation being a challenge slash problem in urban communities, what, what specifically are you talking about mass transportation? What are we saying? And again, what, is, what are the economic implications of that? So I guess I was referencing the, the rising cost of gas. You know, gas north of $5 a gallon. And, and God forbid if you are a small business that's working for, let's say, FedEx or UPS or Amazon with one of these small trucks, Diesel, six, seven dollars a gallon. And that's a significant barrier to overcome, and then that's passed back on to a consumer. So if you if you look at the black demographic with our low income, our low net worth, um, these rising costs is destroying disposable income. And so families are have to having to make some very hard choices. So that trickle-down effect is adverse right now. You know. There was a, and I believe you participated in this, a series of 
public discussions about state public policy or state policy as it relates to the business community. You know, and no disrespect to the governor, but I'm listening to the governor talk about the business climate in the state and how friendly it is to business. And then I hear a range of business leaders, not all, but many, not just a few, who say, who say that, that they don't feel it. They're not feeling the love. Um, and New Jersey is not as friendly. In fact, but someone will call it unfriendly to business. What do you see? I, I, would, I would have to agree with that to, to, with some respect. I think that the state of New Jersey ranks very, very low uh, nationally in terms of uh, being a, a business friendly state. And we're, we're heavily taxed here and low incentivizing, particularly on the small business sector, you know, uh, small businesses and businesses in general pay high taxes. I think there was about $50 million in the budget earmarked for programs around businesses. Uh, don't quote me on that, but, I, but we think that number should be a little higher. I think. The, but, hold the, the, but, but hold on one second. We've had many people from the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. They are, in fact, a disclosed an underwriter of ours, but they've had many people come on saying, the EDA has a whole range of programs that support small business, you say? Yeah, so I was about to get into that and start to kind of name, name some players. That the EDA is probably one of the most creative partners we have in the state helping small businesses. But I think there are some things that the EDA can do as well. I think um, credit enhancement uh, for small business lending, I think that that could help significantly. Um, incentivizing small developers in development. Most of your um, developers that do, let's say, affordable housing, and that would come out of DCA, they're, they're five or six traditional players who've grown very large over the years. I think the focus on these, these small developers, giving them resources so that they can scale and grow as well, I think is increasingly important. There's a lot of government deposits that go in community banks around the state. And I think there could be better engagement with the, with the banks and government to create more opportunities to, to help small businesses get in a better place. There could be some um, facade improvements. There could be some point of sale improvements. I mean, resources given to small businesses that, that are still struggling to come out of the, out of the pandemic. pandemic. I think there's, there's never too much that, that the state could do to help small businesses. Uh, we, we, we've come out of an administration that was a little more top-down <laughs> approach with incentives. And so small businesses are saying, okay, state of New Jersey, we can be a little more aggressive from the bottom up. We're not saying that they're not doing anything. We're just saying that there's a lot more that can be done. John Harmon is the founder of the president and the chief executive officer of the African-American Chamber of Commerce here in the state of New Jersey. And again, one more time, plug the NJPBS show. Halfway to success every first Saturday, 9 a.m. And then it re-airs Tuesday evenings at 11.30. That's John Harmon. Hey, John, thank you so much. We appreciate it as always. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Kane University, Investors Bank, Hackensack Meridian Health, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, New Jersey's Clean Energy Program, Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, and by Operating Engineers, Local 825. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe. And by New Jersey Monthly. With New Jersey's Clean Energy Program, there's so much to save. Free assistance for a more energy efficient home. Win-win. Small business, big savings on new kitchen equipment. Delicious. Long-lasting and so efficient. Love it. Hi, I'm Chloe, your guide to clean energy. Keep at it, New Jersey. Gotta go. Learn more at njcleanenergy.com or call 1-866-NJ-SMART.